Hey there, so today's lesson is on cell specialization and organization. So here's a question for you. Think about your, uh, your favorite band. And imagine that your favorite band only had drummers. No guitars, no bass guitar, nothing but drums, no singer, just drums. You can imagine that if we only had drums, even if we had the most high variation of drums like you see here, they'd be pretty limited in the sounds that they could make. It could still be good, but it's not going to be the same because everything then would be identical in terms of what they can do. Well, in the same way in your body, if it was made up of only one type of cell, if we only had one type of cell throughout the whole body, it would be very limited in terms of the functions that it could do, right? But instead, in our body, we have different types of cells. And uh, as we look at different parts of our body, those cells are specialized both in the types of organelles they have and the number they have of organelles, and then maybe in their shape and so on. They're specialized to their function. So cells have special shapes, types of organelles, whatever, that help it to suit the function that it is supposed to do. Multicellular organisms have different kinds of cells that have different jobs. These cells are specialized for their particular task. So for example, here are some types of cells, right? We got uh, stem cells, like for example, in bone marrow, we have bone cells, blood cells, muscle cells, fat cells, skin cells, nerve cells, endothelial cells, sex cells, pancreatic cells, cancer cells. These are all different types of cells that are specialized for their particular task. Of course, cancer cells are abnormal cells that essentially um, have mutated so that they're just dividing without listening to what the body is saying to do. So they're just kind of dividing over and over and over again and making more of themselves. We see this really easily in taking a look at a leaf of a plant. And we talked about this previously in our lesson when we talked a little bit about um, movement of fluids and plants. But within the plant, we actually have in the leaf different types of cells, and we can actually see these different types of cells and that they are very different in their function and what they have in them. So as a great example, this upper epidermis, right, the top layer right here, these are thin cells that are actually, doesn't really show here, but they're almost completely transparent to let the light through. And they let the light through to these palisade cells, and these palisade cells are very long, and they have tons of chloroplasts. And they have all those chloroplasts so that they can do more photosynthesis. So you can see that they're specialized both in their shape to be long, to capture all the sunlight they can actually capture, and then also in the organelles they have and that they have a ton of chloroplasts in order to perform more and more photosynthesis. So just as one example. So we're gonna take a look at a few different types of cells and just talk about how it's different than other cells. We're just kind of doing a comparison here. So for example, if we look at nerve cells, nerve cells have long fibers running out of the cell body and these fibers connect to other nerve cells. They create these connections between the nerve cells. And they also have insulation called the myelin sheath that actually help conduct signals. So it actually allows the signal to uh, travel more quickly with that myelin sheath. Um, and actually when we talk about uh, like MS, multiple sclerosis, normally that is because of an issue with this myelin sheath occurring. Okay, so that's nerve cells. Red blood cells are specialized for their purpose. They actually have this uh, neat shape called a biconcave shape. Uh, it's kind of like an inner tube, but with the center filled in as well. Uh, and this shape helps it to carry oxygen and it also helps it not to get stuck as it's going through the teeny tiny blood vessels, you know, the capillaries throughout your body. Um, and it doesn't have a nucleus. And the reason why it doesn't have a nucleus, which is really abnormal for a cell, is that that allows it to carry more oxygen by being able to pack more and more hemoglobin into that red blood cell. Hemoglobin is the uh, molecule, the protein, that actually binds to oxygen and allows red blood cells to carry oxygen throughout our body. So red blood cells have that special circular biconcave shape. Um, and also no nucleus. So I mean, again, like specialized for its purpose. If I take a look at muscle cells, muscle cells have tons of mitochondria in them because they need that cellular energy. So they're turning sugars into cellular energy using mitochondria. Uh, and they're elastic and stretchy and they're very, very long in terms of how they look. Um, so like here, it's kind of, here's one 
one muscular cell that you can see your muscular yeah, tissue cell. And then you can actually see that we have this nucleus, but the nucleus is cigar shaped. It's quite different. Uh, and then when a muscle actually contracts, right, it, it shrinks. So it's long and then it pulls together uh, whenever a muscle actually ends up contracting. But that's, you know, a muscle cell. And again, that's very different in how it looks and what it has than let's say a red blood cell. So these cells are all specialized to their purpose. Specialized cells in the human body come from originally stem cells at some point, uh, or even, you know, now we still have stem, some stem cells in our body, uh, mainly in our bone marrow. And what stem cells are is they are uh, cells that have not yet been specialized. They haven't been differentiated into a specific type of cell. So they can become multiple types of cell. Uh, when we're talking about um, embryonic stem cells, they can become any type of cell. So embryonic being uh, stem cells that are found in embryos. So basically uh, a stem cell can become any type of cell and that happens when parts of its DNA um, called genes, okay, genes essentially are like a part of DNA, when they get activated, um, so it's like it's turned on and then it becomes a specific type of cell. So a cell becomes specialized when parts of its DNA become activated. Uh, I probably should just say become activated, um, telling it how to specialize. <clears throat> and then as a result, stem cells can turn into other types of cells. So here's a diagram just showing like, hey, here's the stem cells, and then they can differentiate into blood cells or muscle cells or nerve cells or so on, um, kind of neat. Stem cell research is obviously a big kind of strand of research on how, first of all, we can turn cells into stem cells, and then how we can use stem cells to basically replace cells that are damaged or that need to be replaced. So why do multicellular organisms like have multiple types of differentiated cells? Why, why are multicellular organisms a thing? Well, it gives advantages, right? Multicellular organisms have advantages over single-celled organisms. Like for example, they can live in a wide variety of environments. Take a look at humans and, and how much we can live in different areas and adjust because of our multicellular nature and our ingenuity and stuff as well. That's a different issue. Um, they're larger in size. Obviously, when we get more and more cells together, we can get larger organisms. They can obtain energy from many sources. So different cells can be specialized to actually get energy from different things. So take a look at plant cells that have chloroplasts in them and they can get energy from the sun to make sugars. Well, other cells in the plant uh, might not have chloroplasts at all, but instead just rely on getting energy from mitochondria, turning sugars into cellular energy, but can obtain energy from many sources. Multicellular organisms, many of them are able to move great distances. Their bodies are more complex. So basically, um, and I don't even like the word advantage, it's just an adaptation. Right? Multicellular organisms are adapted in a different way to a different environment than single-celled organisms. And both have their advantages, but multicellular are bigger. They can normally survive in a different range of environments. Uh, obviously, they're larger in size. They might be able to get energy from different types of sources. So it just gives it more adaptability, essentially. Able to move greater distances and bodies are more complex. All right, so this is a bit of review from a previous lesson, but remember that we have cell being the simplest unit um, of, of life, essentially. And then if we have multiple cells of one type together, we call that a tissue. If we have many tissues together that perform one function, that's an organ. If we have many organs and tissues together to perform a larger function, then that's a system. And then finally, once we have a bunch of systems and stuff combined together, we have an organism. So tissues. A number of similar cells combine together to carry out a specific function. Some examples of tissues are connective tissues, epithelial tissues, which is like any surface inside or outside the body, uh, a muscle tissue, a nerves, right? That's, that's a type of tissue. So these are all examples of tissues. In the diagram here, we have, again, other types of tissues. Uh, so again, it's just cells of essentially the same type, all put together to make a tissue. If two or more tissues combine together to carry out a specific function, then we have an organ. So examples of organs are things like the liver, the lungs, the stomach, 
Uh, these are made up of more than one tissue, but they carry out a larger function. So for example, for a stomach, it has to do obviously with digestion of food, right? And it's specially designed in order to be able to pump enzymes and hydrochloric acid into it in order to actually digest the food and then to have a little bit of mechanical movement and digestion occurring as well. So these are organs are just tissues combined together in order to perform a larger function or purpose. Well, if we take a bunch of organs and tissues and put them together to perform an even larger function, then we have a system. So groups of organs and tissues combined together to perform a larger function. So examples are the digestive system, the circulatory system, the nervous system, the immune system. And we're actually gonna take a look at some of these systems in a future lesson, uh, learn more about them and the organs they contain and their function. And then later on, we're even gonna get into some disorders and diseases that have to do with these different systems. Okay, well, that's it. Hopefully that makes sense. So from this today, you should understand that uh, cells are specialized to their certain function in terms of the shape they might have, uh, the types of organelles they have, and the number of those organelles that they may have. Uh, you understand the difference between multicellular and single-celled organisms, and that multicellular organisms are adapted and have some advantages that single-celled organisms do not have. And then, of course, you understand the idea of cell tissue organ system and then organism in that that's from simple to more complex, and you kind of know some examples and that sort of thing. All right, well, that's it for today. Have a good one.